Hello and welcome. How are you all? Thank you for joining us. Oh, only eight of you here at the moment. Hopefully, some more will jump on. Um, we had a bit of a mix. I thought we had a mix up with the time, but I don't know what happened. I didn't touch it, and it, and it went back, back two hours. So I, I think I know who the who culprit knows, is. Right? <laughs> I think Bernie was uh, taking the blame right. earlier. <laughs> How you doing, oh, oh yeah, well, let's blame Bernie. Actually, he he he's the only one that, that had access, so I'm going to blame Bernie. I think Bernie. He Bernie actually Chad, took the no, blame earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If he's willing, I'll dump more on him. Um, yes. How are you going? Um, welcome. Um, we, we have stuff beagle here. We're going to talk mud flood, um, and of course, the link for stuff beagle channel is in the description. So do go across, check it out. Give him a subscribe, a like, all that good stuff. Share it around. Because, um, I mean, you do some really good stuff. And, I mean, you really need a bigger channel. Because <laughs> um, as far as I'm um, aware, it was you that, that sort of came across the viaducts and uh, the prism lighting or, or um, pavement lighting um, glass stuff. Um, and they're two really, really big things. And, of course, you're still uh, going down looking into the mud flood, which is it's kind of been left left sort of behind, left in the mud, in the dust of it, hasn't it, over the last sort of six months yeah. to a year? Everyone's sort of going off in different directions. Um, so it'll be good to get back into it. So welcome, yeah. and welcome everyone in chat. Thank you all for being here. Um, Sayonara, how are you going from North Carolina? There you go. We've got a, a fellow North Car Carolinian. Is that how I say it? Yeah, sure is. Sayonara. Who is Indigo from North Carolina? Day. Hello, random granny. Hello. Okay. Oh, hang on. I should put it up. There it is it's on screen. Joe Cool, Mr. Jelly, Pig's Place, Estelle Larson, Three Fingers. Hello. Natasha, Mr. Jelly, Henry. Hello. Uh, Mustang. I'm going to call you Mustang. GT1982 Mustang. Wow. <laughs> Suzette, I'm Jolly, CJ DB, Static Bait, True Seeker, Alex, Lady Tent. And now I'll take a breath. All right, so 75 of you watching, thank you all for being here. Oh, wow. And I'm back again. I was actually live about two hours ago. <laughs> so, yeah, I called that. That today. was great. Oh, has just jumped in. Yeah, yeah. Was, a bit, had a good. chat with Paul. He's doing, yeah, he's doing really good work and he's going to be moving back to Malta. Um, and he's kind of leading the charge with the boots on the ground at the moment. You know, he's like, oh. he's. Made his own. He's you know, moving uh, back. I thought he was right? going back to visit. Okay. Oh. I'm pretty sure he's moving back. I kept. I, I actually. Nice. I, kept, I tried to confirm it about three times, but he had. We had a big lag issue going on, and then he disappeared. Um, I, but I'm pretty sure he's that. he's moving back because he, he, he. Yeah, make, yeah, because he was living there, um, and I mean, you know, where would you live, Malta or you know, England? <laughs> I think Malta for him would be really Malta. cool. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was just going back to yeah. do research. Um, I misunderstood. I yeah, was really I'm interested pretty sure in that. He's uh, moving back. Um, called that yeah. arc thing he found, uh, Mercury arc re re regulator. Yeah, what, yeah, what did the he um, <laughs> the uh, Mercury arc. Yes. What was that do, called? Do, do the hickey. I look. I looked it up earlier. The like incredible. Really yeah, cool. Um, anyone in chat? What is it? The Mercury Arc. Um, it's like reactor or something. But um, I'm, I want to say vector, but it's definitely not vector. But no, anyway, yeah, no. yeah. I mean, no, and that was cool. just sitting in, in a just sitting in a in a building, right? That that was in Malta, just sitting there. Some like, sort of. The Film um, projector stuff. I don't know. I've never heard of or seen yeah. anything like that. So I don't know. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're... he did put a video out on it out on a, about a year ago, where I think he explained how it worked and what it was. But I, I can't remember at this point. <laughs> that was a year. See, I did. I'd never um, saw that that video. So when he started talking about, it, I didn't know what he was talking about. That was really cool. Yeah, yeah, I'll, he, he I'll went through a, a stage about a year ago, yeah, where he went through a lot of the, um, you know, the popular mechanics magazines that they used to have around the early 1900s. 
Mm. They were like the mechanics, you know, they sort of started off, I think, as farm, you know, farmers sort of fix it yourself and then they turn into popular mechanics and um, they they had the ads for all the popular sort of, you know, tech and he, he found so much stuff in um, And he found a book where it teaches you how to make your own, like, little um, Van de Graaff generators and things and, like, you know, make your own electricity and make your own batteries and it was for teenagers back in like 1900. Wow. So they tell us we're evolving, okay. but um, <laughs> I have a ton of, uh, now we have catalog. people that saw it. Yeah. There's a uh, Bernie. There's some, they're gold. Oh, yeah, Bernie's I've got back. a bunch of catalogs. Um, oh, those, yeah, those I saw a catalogs. Business. They were, the, the old catalogs you, you where go. they would sell the, uh, the products. Um, for like the, the construction and things like that i've got a lot of those and they're really there's a lot of detail in those things very cool yeah well the thing about those as well is they probably haven't been um uh you know like burnt right like as restricted as much as the, the book books because they're just kind of magazines and i guess if you can still find them most of them you know they when they go yeah. through and censor everything, they probably aren't thinking about magazines. You know, they, they're going to the libraries and stuff and getting the book books. So they're a great. Well, I, my theory on it is that these catalogs are the, um, let's say you wanted to buy a pavement light. They put it in a catalog. And my theory is that um, stuff like the, the etherphenials they have in there too. And I think what they were trying to do is cover their tracks and say, look, you could buy them in this catalog. And in reality, they were already there, but they made these catalogs uh, to make it okay. look like they had manufacturers for them. So I have the catalogs Good with the point. actual wow. etherphenials in them. <laughs> and okay. you know those things were there. <laughs> so Yeah, 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 yeah. Good point. So where are you sitting? What's your backdrop there? Is that... Is that um an, like under a viaduct? Looks like it's got a roof on. That it. is a viaduct. That is an actual viaduct that is still there today. It is called the Atlanta Underground, and you what you are looking at is you are literally looking at the old world and the new world at the same time. On the the side over here, you have the buildings that are still underground, with the facades and the doors and the windows and then over here you have the new viaduct that's covering it up and this is just one of the levels it goes down wow. so the viaducts are very all right well that's probably a very good that's probably a very good segue um should we get in and have some looks and we'll jump into viaducts and you can kind of explain what they are and 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 okay. you've got the floor all right we'll do it i'll uh share screen and um see what we can get into here let me know when you see that oh hang on i've got to add it there we you go got, have you got keep it on the big screen yep Okay, yep, got we've it. We've got the old street with the fence. In there. Yep. Okay, so what we have here is an old street, and this is this street looks like any street in any town, in any you know city, in any world, in any country, um, around the world. It looks very normal. You have buildings on the left. You have buildings on the right. You have sidewalks on the left. You have sidewalks on the right. You have. Uh, a street in the middle you have cars on it you can see trolley lines here in the middle everything looks normal would you agree it does okay you got street lights but, but this is anything <laughs> but normal this is a viaduct in atlanta in in uh atlanta georgia while under construction Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. This is that's what, the viaduct what a viaduct is. is. It is a raised platform, and it, <coughs> on top, it looks like a regular street with sidewalks and trolley lines 
and street lights, and it looks like the side of the building, but below are arched doors and windows and streets and train tracks, the whole nine yards. Now, wow. let me uh, switch to a different um, image. Have you got a different image up there? Yep, we got the CD, yep. Okay. This is Atlanta, Georgia. And um, this is in 1929. They started covering over the downtown area in Atlanta in 19 in the 1920s. And you can still see in these images where the viaducts before they covered it up. Today, this is covered up here. This is a viaduct here. This is a viaduct here. This is a viaduct. Over here is a viaduct. This whole street, viaduct, viaduct here. And today, this is covered over with also a viaduct. The entire downtown core is covered in viaducts. This is a, a like a postcard kind of thing. And it says here, Atlanta reconnected by viaduct, viaducts. The first and second floors will become forgotten about until the 1970s entertainment complex was built. And what they're talking about is the Atlanta underground. And um, in this photo, um, you can see it's not a very good photo, but the viaduct is right here and here and here. And this is all viaduct here. Now, today, this is all covered over. Everything's covered over. Okay. Here's another one. This is a, a long viaduct coming into the city. And now today, this is all covered over. It's all one level. This is a, 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 a map of downtown Atlanta. And as I was doing my research for this, I traced the viaducts um, to a certain extent. I have more work to do, but the red lines here now are actual confirmed viaducts. And they the blue circles here, they indicate where the viaducts start to go up onto the viaduct. So you have a normal road down here and it goes up into the viaduct. All the red lines are viaduct. Okay, this is the downtown core and um, what they call um, the Atlanta Underground is only this portion right here. But all of this has underground. And from my research, it's showing that all of this is also underground. Go ahead. So the Atlanta Underground, that's like where you walk underneath the street like the picture behind you kind of thing is that correct and i'll show yeah, well, you more pictures of that like a tourist place. Okay. it's a it's a uh, entertainment and shopping complex underground and it's a tourist destination um and it's right now it's kind of in limbo um they've they've had uh it's is i think it's closed down at this point um it's gone out of fashion um, but we'll, I'll show you more of that a little bit, a little bit later. This is, um, in 1905 and the official history says that they were building the, they started building the viaducts in 19, the 1920s, but you can clearly see that this is a viaduct here and they're installing it already. And you can see the doors and the windows below ground here. All of this today is covered over. This is a major street, and this is what it would look like today. It would look like a normal everyday street. But what is under there is an entire covered over city center. This is also Atlanta. This is the Five Points area. And uh, this is the viaduct here. The, the flat part here with the trolleys, that is the raised viaduct. Okay. This is the yeah. viaducts um, in construction. The original mile marker for Atlanta is right here. Um, 
it's kind of hard to see what's going on but this is while they're doing the construction of the viaducts and you can see right here viaducts atlanta viaducts um this so is also in construction. the 20s and 30s pretty much doing this yeah, they well, they, well, they the say official that history that. says between the in the 1920s they started this, but I found it goes back further. Um, I think they were already doing it, and yeah, then they had to come out with it. Um, this is a, yeah, well, it's a really weird that, story that because it's so um because you hear it like in in many cities that, that they they forgot about it. Right. Yeah. So they do it in the 1920s, yeah. and 50 years later, by the 1970s, no one knows that it was there. So I mean, yeah, you know, come on. Yeah, it, it, it's a forgotten history. You know, every kid it in the would know it. It is. It is definitely not literally known. covered up. Hey? Yeah, they 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 literally covered over the city. This is the viaducts and construction as well. All of this right here. It, this. What you're looking at, this whole level right here, matter of fact, um, it, it's uh, it's kind of hard to see, but there is a viaduct um, uh, I-beam, uh, or the, the posts that go up, that's what these things are right here. So the new level is up here. So the new first floor, what you see today is up here. This is all underneath the ground now. It's still there. This is a viaduct, and this is in the middle of construction where they started with going one way with the roads and then came back the other way. Everything you see here now today is covered over at this level here. This is the street level today. All of this that you see right here is still there today underground, and nobody knows it. It's all covered over, but it's still there. Go ahead. It's just insane. I mean, I, I obviously, you know, I knew about them. I've watched your stuff, but um, I never knew that they were so extensive, like that they were covering whole cities. I mean, that that's that's, that's what's a lot of work right, and a lot of resources, and, and and it's a certain level of tech as well to to literally build a raised road and then have trams and stuff running on it and power and um, yep. I mean, and and to they want us to believe they did all this in the in the twenties or thirties, and probably what within a couple of years, no doubt. It seems a little unlikely. Yeah, yeah I think they started it much earlier than uh, they tell us, um, because it, it's just a ton of work. A, 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 astronomical. So much work. work. <laughs> this is a viaduct and here. That of course, you've already got right in a certain down. amount of cities, right? They could be everywhere. Sorry. I, I keep I keep finding them. Um, I'm going to show you a new one uh, that I found yesterday. Um, researching, um, so you can see right down here is this now today. Th see here it's it's flat and here it's flat. All of this is viaduct, but today this over here is viaduct. So now this is a street. Um, this is in the middle of construction. Oh my gosh. That is a viaduct right there. Oh, okay. all of this. Is, yeah, yeah. See the the. This so that's where it's top. coming down to join the road kind of thing. That well, this is this joined to this. This this section here is actually covered over, and you can see they're covering oh, up the I building see. right there. Yeah, yeah. And this is the new first level. Okay, yeah, yeah. And all of so, this I is mean, covered I mean, over now. So when this happened. Uh -huh. So many people would have lost their houses or half their houses, their businesses, all this stuff. I mean, and then that's on top of like um, community um, uh, amenities. Is that the word? They would have lost so much stuff. But what? Then everyone just doesn't remember it. Like no one's grandma says, oh, when I was a girl, we lost our bottom two stories to the, you know, because they built a vibe. I mean, there's no way that 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 all that information would not be passed on. That doesn't make sense at all to me because that's a massive event. It's a massive yeah. event. Um, well, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll give you my, my short answer right now is that um, my research is pointing to um, in around 1943, they 
basically changed the matrix and it's a simulation that we live in and that they changed it and uh -huh. we never noticed nothing. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's well, a whole other story. I mean, I mean, we might have to be back, be back to get into that one. Um, <laughs> but I mean, my sort of, yeah, my, 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 yeah, research is kind of honing in on that kind of date as well, to tell you the truth, that yep. kind of time period. And, and it looks like, um, you know, exactly about the book, right? Big Brother, um, I mean, sorry, 1984, where they retroactively mm -hmm. change things. They go back right. and, and, and like you were saying, you know, that in, in the present day, they print all these magazines and date the 1900 and release. Oh, no, no, we have that tag. Yeah, but if you remember the book, that's one of my favorite books. Um, if you remember, they actually changed history in mid in mid speech. They at one he would begin the speech, <laughs> speech. and it would be at war with one country, and then in the middle of the speech, they changed what country they were at war with, and then they changed all the banners and the propaganda all during the speech. They did it real time. During the speech, yeah. and no, and everyone, no one realized. And I was just, yeah. It was bizarre. <laughs> yeah. This is a um, a modern uh, picture uh, off of Google, and you can see off the side of the road, still underneath the uh, viaducts here, where they've done some construction. Uh, this is a modern picture where you can still see the edge, um, and this is how this is how you start yeah. finding out if you're in a viaduct city as you look at the edges. And I'll explain how you do that later. This is a Google Earth shot, and you can see this is a viaduct here, and it comes into the city. Uh, there's one back here, too. Um, this is what's called the gulch. Um, this is about a four-story viaduct underneath Atlanta, Georgia. And it's massive. Wow. So the point is that up here is the viaduct. This is street level. This is the actual level of the entire city. And this is below it. Still to this day. This is a viaduct here. Um, this is a viaduct. Okay. I just can't believe the amount of iron that must have gone into that because they're pouring roads on top of like just there. Look how many girders yeah. they need. Oh, it's incredible. I, I mean, and so because the, you know why there's not more records of this. I don't know. There's um, this is a uh, where did all this come from? Yeah. Um, this is a uh, a news article where they were talking about the reopening of one of the viaducts to traffic, um, because they had it closed down while they were building it. Um, this is a viaduct here, and this is all covered over now. The open areas here. So look at this. I mean, that is. Can you believe they covered that up? <laughs> you know, it's crazy. I know. I know. So this is. I mean, you know, this is why in a lot of these cities we get the windows for starters, right? Cut through them through the middle, and all these lower levels and basements. Um, you know, I think some of them, you know, are probably in the mud, but clearly not all of them. Clearly a lot of it, you know, they're right. empty underneath. It's all viaduct. And yeah, I, mean, I think in the bigger cities you're going to find this. Is, this right here is what's called the mm, Berkeley Plan. Yeah. Um, they the, the, the official story says that they, they decided that, that they tried to put in this thing called the Berkeley Plan. Um, there's a wiki page right here that talks about it. And basically, it, the idea was that they were going to make this um, area here in downtown Atlanta, but they decided against it. And if you get down in the bottom of the article, they actually say, um, following the rejection of the Plaza Plan, Atlanta mayor uh, created a commission to study the creation of viaducts in Atlanta. This led to the creation of numerous uh, viaducts of Atlanta through the, throughout the 1920s. Um, so they didn't do that plan, but that was talked about before. Um, this is talking about the Berkeley plan. Um, it's a newspaper, a dream that must come true. Um, all right, let me 
Let's see what else we got. Um, okay, this is an old postcard. This is a viaduct after it was installed. This is um, off a uh, bird's eye view map, and you can see the viaduct right here. All this, he, what you're seeing here right here is now raised to the viaduct level. Um, this is a train going underneath the viaducts through downtown Atlanta. This is, everything you're seeing here is a viaduct. The entire downtown core is a viaduct. Here is the top of a viaduct, it's and on the really right-hand side, you can barely make out the below-ground area of the viaduct before they covered it over with a street. This is on Peachtree Street, which is a major street in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, the, well, the major street. Uh, this this is a viaduct um, where now the trains still run underneath the city of Atlanta. And you can see all these viaducts going here, but now so all like this is an covered over. Now, is it? This like is all covered over. Now. Every bit of this yeah. is covered over. So the Every whole train system is an underground right. system. That's interesting. Right. Well, they run the, the subway and the uh, they run the subway and the trains under there. This is below. This is above. Thank you very much, Morgan. Very much appreciated. Okay. Um, holy dooly. Um, let me close out some of these just to clean them up a bit. This is a photograph of one of the shops that was covered over. Now the street level is up here. But this is an old world shop that was covered over. There is graded underground right here and here and here so these would have been going into windows um, below the ground level so this is this city was mud flooded and then they they covered over that to get rid of the mud flood to hide it and this is still there underneath the ground it's still there today this is the top of what the um, the Atlanta underground is to the right here and you're look everything you're looking at here is a viaduct. It looks like a normal city street, but you are on a platform. It's not on the ground. This is underneath at the Atlanta Underground. Um, the top here is the viaduct, and they have covered it in concrete to hide it. They've also covered the pillars, and then they leave the the walls here are the old world and the cobblestone street is the old street um here's another view um you can see old shop front some of them are older than um some of them have were modernized but as like right here you can see the facades right here over here and it still has the uh cobblestone brick road installed that is the the original street that was there now this is not um this is this is the the level of mud flood okay this is really important what yeah. you're looking at here is not the original level if you notice right here there's stairs going down oh, wow yeah, so you're already wow. one level below and it goes deeper Okay, this, that's the uh, same but, that, but that's ground level in inverted commas as far as that's that's on dirt, that level. After after the mud but flood, this was the level down. of the ground right here that where this, where this uh, mm -hmm. sidewalk and road are. There's original facading. Um, here is a, uh, these, these are original street lights, uh, the gas lights. Um, you can see a drop down into uh, windows and doors below ground right here. So, you know, it goes down below there. Uh, there is the picture of this behind me. This is the colorized version. These are original street lights. 
This is the original road, the original sidewalk, the original facade, all underground. This is a, a restaurant called, this was a famous restaurant called Down the Hatch. And this right here is the level you were just looking at. The viaduct is right here. This is the mud flood level. And then the original level goes down. And the, there is so history. I'm trying to confirm that the there was level? a full-sized um, replica of a, uh, not a full-size, but a very, very large replica of a pirate ship inside down below i have pictures of it but i'm trying to confirm it this is a map oh, of the um atlanta underground that you're you i was just showing you pictures of this is the only area you were looking at right here but all of this is the same way but nobody knows it uh this is that same storefront i showed you before the storefronts of atlanta underground before they became underground wow. after the construction of a series of viaducts. This is a an exposed area of the Atlanta Underground. This level here is modern day street level. This is the for, this is mud flood level here. These these have obviously been uh, brutalist facaded, but this is the viaduct right here. This is underground Atlanta, viaduct, street level, original lamps, same thing here. This is a um, um, a souvenir shop, um, and this is uh, windows and doors below ground. So the mud, he is standing on mud flood level, but it goes below him. These are original shop windows. That we're on mud flood level. Now, this is mud flood level. It goes another level below this at least. We don't know how far it goes below. This is a better shot of the place where the souvenir shop was, and you can see the windows and doors a little bit better, even though it's not a real good picture, but this is the viaduct up here. This is an amazing shot. This is... Yeah. The viaduct is up here on the right-hand side, this dark area, and this was covered over by the viaduct. The top of the viaduct is right here. It's been attached at the edge of the building. All this is below downtown Atlanta now. This is the original store front sides, and this one right here is two stories. And you can see they've put stairs to go up and down temporarily before they covered it over. And you can see the 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 detail up here, and the uh, the the quality. I mean, it's just <laughs> why. That's downtown. That's a uh, Atlanta. It's insanity. It, it's mm. absolute insanity, isn't it? This it's is this the same I mean, shot I showed you earlier. Yeah. Different angle. This is that same shot, but it's a a little different picture. That's the viaduct up there. This is the down to hatch. This is a more modern picture um, bec uh, because they left and then yeah. came back. So it's been uh, a little bit modernized and you can see the background of the underground Atlanta. Okay, let's see what else I got. Uh, Okay, I'll show you, show you I mean, because I mean, in Perth, obviously, and in yeah. Perth, we used to have a a nightclub called the Underground, and I'm pretty sure almost every city in the world has like a club or a pub that's called the Underground that's underground. Yeah, I'm and finding those more. Now and more. we know why, right? Because oh yeah, yeah. This is uh some diagram. I've got some diagrams <coughs> explaining um, <laughs> the viaducts. Um, th this is the construction of them and the idea of how they're constructed. And you see you have the ground level up here and then they make the ground level flat. They regrade it, but the ground underneath is all different kinds of shapes. This is uh, the Wikipedia page for Viaducts of Atlanta. If you'd like more information on that. Um, this is uh, confirmed down. Uh, this is the official um, streets that they say are viaducts, but there's a lot more than this. They give you some, 
uh, but they don't give it all to you. Um, here's some information about the viaducts, uh, the uh, Atlanta, uh, the uh, Atlanta Underground here. Um, this is about the gulch in Atlanta. That's the 40 foot uh, viaduct area. This is about the Atlanta Underground. So there's this information out there that you can go find. I'm just, you know, kind of throwing it at you. Here's a web page that talks about the Atlanta yep. Underground. Um, let's see, Atlanta, Georgia, the underground represents the original surface level of downtown Atlanta. For the present streets are raised roadways, viaducts built in the 1920s. The shopping center underground Atlanta taking advantage of the former street level storefronts covers six blocks and includes retail shopping restaurants. It was begun in 1968 and reopened in 1989 after a financial for forced closure, and it's now closed again. Um, here's some information about um, how what they were talking about when they were talking about building the viaducts, um, some cost and things here. Viaducts including approaches, total 700 and... Seven million five hundred. Seven million. Yeah, seven million five hundred. Uh, that was in nineteen twenty. This is. Let me show you this first. This was a plan that they wanted to implement but didn't. They wanted to have moving sidewalk system underneath Atlanta. Um, and you see, this is the the modern street level. And this is they wanted to make these moving uh, sidewalks. And this is the mechanism. Uh, the blueprint operation for it. And the idea was that you had three platforms, one here, one here, one here. This one had a seat. This is the fastest moving one. And mm. you would go faster and faster each platform you got onto. And sees a uh, city of Atlanta. Oh, okay. Okay. These are uh, some uh, wow. diagrams of viaduct uh, bases. Now these are larger. There's different kinds of viaducts. Um, like these, like this would be for more like a train. Um, but um, they're important to also study those. This is kind of a diagram of how a viaduct would look if you're looking at it from uh, straight on. This is a, a great example of a viaduct. How this is the viaduct here, and you have the ground high here and high here. And it can be any kind of shape in between. And then you see what this is what Atlanta, Georgia looks like. This is ground level today, this modern street level, and this is what's underneath. So what why do you think they built them? Is this did I mean it, well clearly that they're they're post mud flood? Is it just to, I mean, I'm, and that's the story, isn't it? That they just wanted to flatten everything out. What do you think about yeah, that? Yeah, um, that, that is the, um, I'm going to stop share. I've got more to share on that. But the the idea being that they wanted to, the, 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 the roads were going up and down, okay? And if you know anything about, you mm. know, road construction and moving cars and vehicles around, that's a pain in the butt. So they wanted to level the street level and regrade it to a flat uh, plane. <laughs> and so um, they came up with this viaduct idea. And so um, now they have, the, if, if, if you think about it, if, you, if you're in a downtown area and you see absolutely flat streets all around, there's something strange about that. How did those streets get so flat? Because ground goes, you know, it, it moves, it, it goes up, it goes down, it has hills and, you know, it's uneven, you know, okay. We think today, oh, well, they just graded that. But what I'm telling you is that is true in some cases, but in others, it's a viaduct <laughs> and it's extensive. <laughs> Mm. Um, so I'm going to share some more. That's what um, gets me, the scale of it. The scale is, is incredible. <clears throat> the scale, um, because, I mean, that's just one city we've been looking at. I mean, if they were doing this everywhere, it's just because this is, you know, well, they say it's modern, right? 
within 100 years ago, um, I mean, mm-hmm. that's huge. And this would have been going on all over the place, but no stories of it anywhere. No stories of people losing their businesses or their houses to, to the vibe duct and, you know, right. no stories of, you know, displacement and you know, lack of housing, you know, or anything like that. It's just... And then, and then the the kicker is, you know, they, oh, they forgot about it and found it fifty years later. I mean, that's it's just that's just a silly story. It is. It really is. Um, let me know when you see this. You've got. You're going to have Google Earth. All right. Oh, hang on. Yep. There we go. Okay, this is Atlanta, Georgia. What you're looking at is uh, Google Earth, and you have the Atlanta Underground area is the area in the center of your screen. Peachtree Street is right here. That's a major city, a major city street. Um, everything you're looking here is a viaduct. Okay, and the way that I found this is that I was looking into the Atlanta Underground, and I realized that there was something very weird about that. And so I looked at, well, if you've got this area that is really flat, okay, and it's a viaduct, right? And then I started looking around, and I realized that everything is that flatness, okay? Mm. So then I wondered, well, where does the flatness end, (laughs) so what you do is you have to go to the edges and what they do is they bring it in on the edges of the city and they they gradually raise it up so you don't notice. So right here is the entrance to the viaduct. Uh, okay. Yeah. And then you go down the street and everything's flat. And right here you have <laughs> the viaduct coming out again. Wow. Okay. And over here you have the viaduct. Is, is that still like that? Yes. Wow. So some See, are still exposed. Yeah, right. Some of it is still exposed. Mm. And mm. Um, now this is a train, but you see that you can see the viaduct right there. Now you can find this um, in many cities. Um, now I haven't done the research on, I have a list of these things, but it takes a lot of time to really get in there and do the research. You can see the viaduct entering the city here. And when you go to these roads, these entrances, you always find this, this uh, kind of way of getting up onto it. Um, and they're very tricky about how they do it. Um, let me see if I can find you, you. You can't see it on every road. You have to, Sometimes they sometimes they had hills in, in an area and they could hide it better than others. But see, you can see the viaduct is right, you know, going up right there. Um, you see this hill right here? That is a via that's going up onto the viaduct. Yeah. Okay, but then you get up here yeah. and you're straight, you're flat. Not so okay, cool. so that's the idea behind that. Uh what we have here is a uh this is a a drop in in Atlanta. That's downtown Atlanta. Uh, modern street level was up here, and this is underneath the viaduct. And you can still it still it still has the steel there. Okay, and um, here is the uh, what is called the Gulch area. Yeah. And um, the area I showed you earlier had the forty foot drop in. It's underneath here. And so there's a 40 foot drop underneath this area here. And all of this, see, is a, this whole thing here is a viaduct, this whole platform. That's all viaduct. And you can see it right here. So that's that big area that you showed us. That's that area you showed us before on that map, the proposed plan, the big building in it. Okay. They covered the whole lot. Correct. Oh my gosh. Correct. Wow. And you, if you know how to see it, once you see it, it, it's it's incredible how easy it is to find. It's just a matter of getting the it, right perspective. 
It is, isn't it? Because it's incredible that, I mean, just looking at that, there's so many hints and places that you can clearly see it, but no one's cottoned onto it at all. Exactly. That is a viaduct right there. This is the gulch area. Um, this is the 40 foot area. Um, and if you go under here is the gulch, what they consider, what the uh, people from Atlanta call the gulch. It's their nickname for it. Okay. Um, let me get rid of these. Now, um, let's What's see. What's a gulch? Does that mean something? I, um, I mean yeah, goal? I can't remember what it means though. Um, it does have a meaning. Let me uh, uh kind of readjust here. Um, let's see. Uh, I t tell you what. Let me start with on um, Google because it probably be easier to understand. Okay, get on there. All right. Bear with me, folks. Sometimes this takes a hot minute. Okay. Okie dokie. No what we have here this is, is this is a new city. This is Cleveland, Ohio. I've confirmed it is a, also a viaduct city. And what you're looking at is the city center. You have the uh, soldiers and sailors uh, obelisk right here. And this is the big public square here and um what we have is i realized that this is a viaduct because when they did construction on the subway which runs underneath this area here in this area here um they exposed what they were doing and so i was doing the research for atlanta and I realized that I was seeing the same phenomena here. And you'll notice mm. you have the viaduct right here going into the city. And you yeah. can see it peaking right here. <coughs> okay. And this is the edge of the viaduct. Yep. This is the edge of the city, will be considered the edge of downtown Cleveland. And once you see it, once you understand and comprehend what you're seeing, um, it's very easy to, to see it. This is a major viaduct coming into the city. And they actually talk about this, oh, the viaduct, the, the Cleveland viaduct, okay? This is what they're talking about, right? But what I'm telling you is the whole damn city yeah. is a viaduct, okay? <laughs> see how flat yeah. that is? Yeah. Well, they're just bringing it up to that level. And if you drop down right here, um, you can see the mud flood windows. I just, this is one of my favorite little mud yeah, flood windows. Okay. And then you start to get the angles. Yeah, right. Okay, but now we get right here and we're on flat. And right here yeah. is David Rockefeller's building. Oh. oh wait a minute, wait a minute. This, this one's David Rockefeller, sorry. This one's David Rockefeller's building right oh. here. And that's got the uh, the uh, uh, iron, uh, wow. cast iron uh, facade um, still on wow. there. And uh, let's see if you go back cast out. Iron yeah, I've got catalogs with it in it. I, yeah. wow. <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> um. Let's see. Let like my bearing. cast iron, like electric transfer or Faraday cage. Who knows? I, I have always suspected maybe it had something to do with the energy. There's a, that's a viaduct right there. Mm. Okay. Um, so that's called a viaduct because it continues in to become a viaduct. Obviously, the bit we can see most people would call a bridge, but. It continues in and, and and goes building to building like like a viaduct. Correct. Is Correct. that the definition of a viaduct? Well, I'll show you the definition. It's a little bit squirrely, um, but it, it you more have to kind of. <laughs> um, they they're not real clear about it. One way that sometimes they say it one way, sometimes they say it another. So you really just have to understand it 
in your own way. Um, if you notice here, this right here is modern day street level. The entire city wow. is this level. And then you look right here and look, look at all this under. Mm. That's a lot, isn't it? Oh, it, it's huge. And you see that so often, you know, like freeways and, and train tracks and things that are at the edge of cities and they're lower. You see it everywhere. Everywhere. Okay, now really? and, uh, and the subway, that's another thing, right? So I've always right. wondered how the hell they, they built subways, but um I think now I know, right? <laughs> here's, yeah, here's the I, old I tracks the, and cover them up. I think the subway was actually uh the subway and the and the trams were, were part of the cover up to uh build the viaducts. This is uh Cleveland when they were yeah, building yeah. the viaducts. This is uh, it's not not the best pictures, but um, and I don't have great. This is uh, the a, a viaduct in going into Cleveland. This is underneath the viaducts in Cleveland. This is literally underneath the city the city center. This is what it looks like, and it's abandoned now. Not right. This is uh, it's coming in with the old trolleys this is a viaduct going into the city this is the construction of the subway and the modern day street levels up here and when i saw this kind of stuff i started getting triggered as to wait a minute something ain't right here this is construction of the subway subway it's all subway this is underneath the viaduct in the subway It's all subway. It's all viaduct. What you, everything you're looking here is a viaduct. And you see it's the same style that you would see in Atlanta. It's just a raised platform. Mm. Mm. Nothing and fancy. This is like the narrative, you know, sort of tries to make a city like, oh, well, yeah, you know, we, we just sort of did it in our city because of, you know, hills and that. But clearly, on a, it looks like it was rolled out, you know, across across all cities, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, it. it I don't think every city has this, but, you know, it, 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 it it's probably a lot, a lot more than I realized. <laughs> this is a viaduct, and this right here, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. bridge switches, this, this moves. See how it moves? See that? Yeah, yeah. That's a viaduct with yeah. a moving bridge. This is an old picture, old viaduct from West Side from Woodcut. From Woodcut. So, what year is that? Do we know? Because it didn't look like the nineteen thirties, did it? No, no. No, <laughs> I mean you got, old. <laughs> you got horse. <laughs> There's a, a, I mean it, it's this is um uh, a ramp. The subway is down here when they're building it. Um, the modern day street level is this where the white starts is the is the modern day street level, but everything here is below the viaduct. Everything that's dark is below the viaduct. Right here would be where the viaduct would be. Uh, the, the modern day street level would be about right here. Wow. This is something. I It's something to do with the viaduct, but I don't know what exactly it is. Okay, let's see. Um, what else have I got? Um, Let's see. I mean, Cincinnati, Ohio. It's, it, it just makes uh, it's bizarre. I mean, we hear so much about all these, you know, tunnels and un underground things, you know, lately. I mean, was this part of the plan? Maybe were they creating, you know, a, a system for themselves as part of it as well? Maybe. Who knows, right? Yeah. But also, this I was thinking is all these Cincinnati, holes we see. Cincinnati. 
This oh, is another sinkhole that you um, see. I mean, actually, there's, there's photos of Russia where the viaducts have broken and, and cars have fallen through them. Have you seen those? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, mm. I, I'm, I'm not going to show too much of, of uh, Cincinnati, but um, Cincinnati oh, okay. is uh, also a viaduct there. city. Yeah. Yeah. You can see the same thing here. Um, now, finding information about them doing this is almost next to impossible. Um, the data is... yeah. That's why I did Atlanta, because I found the data that said, yes, we did it. Yes. <laughs> now... So um, you think it'd be like a major engineering feat, right? And they'd be like, yay, look what we did. You would think. I mean, you would think they would be proud of it, um, that it would be part of their history. Mm. Um, this is... Yeah. Uh, the next one, let's see. This is um, a viaduct called uh, Holborn Viaduct in London. Um, here's some pictures of it. Uh, and um, this is just to give you an idea that uh, there are viaducts in other places, other countries. Um, and that, you know, this is the same, this one's very fancy, but um, mm. what's interesting is uh, this is Google earth. Now, if I come out of this, Oh, it's not going to do it. Okay. If I go, hold on. <laughs> I've got, I've got the, uh, I think it's this one. Yes, this is the next street over from what you were looking at. It's the same viaduct, one street over. So the street in the middle going the opposite way is, is, is all raised level. Let's see if I can get out. Yep, see the viaduct we were just oh, looking yeah. at is right there. Okay, Let's see it from that angle. And then that little viaduct yeah. part was right here, right in that tucked in that corner. Now, it's hard. That's the only two places on this viaduct that I could find that, that were exposed. But it, here's the thing. What I'm trying to encourage people to do is that are boots on the ground people is look, I'm showing you these things exist. Now get out there and see what else is there. Because I can't mm. see any more than I can see. But look, if this is a viaduct, okay, and these buildings go into the ground, what's right here? You follow? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Let's see. Now, if... uh. I've got some more. Now, in this same location, I looked on the side. Um, this is coming away from that area out to the edge. And this is what the edge looks like. So if you're looking for the viaducts, you see that right there? Why would you build yeah. like that? <laughs> now, look at, look at the architecture right here. Seriously? That's below ground level now. That this is this is a new there's oh, ground wow. level. Why would you build like that? Okay. <coughs> if you go down the uh river here. Exactly right. would... I don't even know what's going on there. Oh, that's not <laughs> city. Oh, what's that? And so you That's got the, the viaduct place. coming in. This is London. That's still London, is it? And it's raised straight yeah, up in the town. Okay, yeah, okay, you can see it going up there. Now this is this one's interesting. You see, take a real good look at what you're looking at there. 
Now I'm going to drop the little man down and let's see what little man can find. Okay. How weird's that, right? <laughs> okay. Now if you go up and you drop little man right here, this is modern day street level. That's a mall. Okay. Okay. Now, um, yeah. last night I was, uh, having a, um, uh, I was having a chat with um, Artadino, and he mentioned this right here. He said, the Canton Viaduct. That's all he told me. He goes, I got one of those near me called the Canton Viaduct, right? And so that was the lead I had. So I went to look in to see what his viaduct looked like, just to, you know, you know see what the lead was. And, um, yeah, you know, it was interesting. And what I was seeing was, okay, it's a, a railroad viaduct bridge, which is interesting. It's old world. Um, but it's not, um, exactly, uh, what I'm looking for. Right. And so let me see if I can, okay. This is Google pictures of that viaduct. Oh. Um, it's, it's pretty, okay. It's neat. Okay. It's old world, but it's not, mm. it's not what I'm looking for. It's not the, um, it's not the, the, the juice, Lady, you know, yeah. this is mm. the viaduct on Google earth. Now it's massive. It's big. It's cool. It's, it's neat. Okay. I like it, but it's not what I'm looking for. It's, it's, it's not, you know, a viaduct that I'm, I'm interested in really getting into. So I pulled out to see, okay, what mm -hmm. else is in the area? Okay. And when I pulled out, I took a look around and lo and behold, Boston. So just for shits and giggles, I went to go look at Boston <coughs> and, guess, and guess what? <laughs> <laughs> I love this doing it with freeways, don't I? <coughs> now, Boston's a little bit different um, in a lot of ways because Boston has it's surrounded on three sides by water. And what my thinking is. <laughs> is that they came in and shored up the edges of the water and built, you know, walls, retaining walls. And then they ran viaducts to flatten out the city streets. But if you look into, I've done extensive research into this area here. This is the Beacon Hill area. This is a uh, cheers bars right here. Um, and I've looked into the back bay, which is right here. And I've confirmed all of this is um, underground, uh, that it's mud flooded. And the official story of Boston is that most of this land that you're looking at was filled in. That it was, uh, that it was actually water. All of this area here was water. All of this area here was water. That's the official story. But wow. what I'm telling you is that, that it won't water. It was all here. And it would they have brought in viaducts to cover over the to, to, to raise the levels to the same level. So it's a I believe from, from what I'm seeing, wow. and I just found this last night. I believe this is another yeah, viaduct. No, no. So this is new research, so and I will probably sure. have to go deeper on this. So yeah, I mean we've got a freeway exactly the same as that in Perth. Like it's lower, you know, a couple of a level and a half, two levels below the, and right next to the city. Um, I'm gonna have to go and do some some checking out of Perth. Yeah, I mean I know, and we've definitely I know there is. There's definitely one in down there. 
the best I could find on Boston on a quick search was that they, you know, built the subway systems and it was a big mess. So that's building the subway. But uh, that's that's about the the gist of um, the the vibe. Oh, I do have one more thing you, you'd ask a question, and I, I do have the the answer to that. Let me share that, and that'll be that for those. Um, this is a great little picture. Uh, a viaduct is a long bridge-like structure carrying a road or railway across a valley or other low ground. Bridges are built across rivers or arms of the sea, whereas viaducts tend to cross valleys and low-lying areas where they may or may not be a river. Rail bridges and viaducts are as old as the railway itself. Uh, is a viaduct a bridge? A viaduct, a viaduct type of long bridge or series of bridges, usually supported by a series of arches or on spans between tall towers. The purpose of a viaduct is to carry a road or railway over water, a valley, or other, another road. So there's your, your kind of your definition, quote unquote. But if you notice, it's not clear. It it does not really define not. exactly what it is. I I'm call it a it with the construction. That, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, but it's just, yeah, like obviously we've all heard of aqueduct um, for carrying water. Um, water. And these are viaducts to, 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 to use to go via somewhere, I guess. Um, but yeah, this is the thing. I was thinking all these sinkholes, you know, that we see, and a lot of them are, are in, you know, I've seen them in places where they don't look like they're on roads, but if these are old, a lot of these could be covered up, right? And if they give way, that they just start swallowing up everything, right? Because there's such a massive space underneath them. Could be. Have you seen that? Weird. Weird. <laughs> Go ahead. The, the sinkholes. I mean, they can't explain sinkholes, and you need, a, a, you know, a space right underneath them for them to 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 suck, <laughs> and they do suck. I've never. Have you seen that movie, A Boy and His Dog? Yes, yes, good movie. Yeah, I love the <laughs> movies. Yes, yeah, yeah, a bit of a. It's, um, I had, it's I had exactly like this, right? It dropped down into a whole another, whole another world underneath the ground. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess one of the big questions is, you know, a lot of them are blocked off. I mean, you know, are, are there people down there using these areas still? This is the thing, and I mean, to people. You know, because all you would need is a couple of buildings where they, they keep the you know the the entrance the lower levels open, and you know we don't know what's going on down there, do we? I mean, and then they've got trains in there. Know. I mean, well, the, the trains the, the area the trains go in they they have them uh, the the sides blocked off. So when you're going through, because I've seen the train, I've I've seen video of the trains going underneath. You do not see sideways and you don't see what's under there. It looks like a subway under there. They've made it look like a subway. Yeah. They've covered up the doors and windows and shit. It, the, yeah, right. <laughs> it's so it's a definite cover up. Oh, it's, so, it's yeah. so, I mean, obviously, this is just opinion, but like, when, like in your opinion, when do you, when, when do you think this was done? Obviously, they're telling us the 30s or 20s. Um, I mean, what do you think? I think it was do done you think that that by, the you know, the 43. It was all finished um, by 43. But when it was begun, I don't know. Because personally, I believe steel is old world. I don't believe that was a newer invention. Oh, no, yeah, I, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So... No, I know they mean, had the, the stuff that didn't uh, rust and they always use the big rivets in it. Yeah. Mm. I, I don't know. Now, another... Yeah, um, definitely, definitely. Another field of research I've been doing a lot into um, that is different than viaducts because they don't do the same thing in every area. And this is really important for people to study is what is called regrades. 
and what they do is they go in and they uh, regrade the city. They did it in uh, Kansas City. They did it in Seattle. They did it in San Francisco. They did it in Los Angeles. They did it in Chicago. And Chicago is also another city, I believe, possibly could be a viaduct city. And you know how they talk about raising Chicago? I don't think they raised Chicago. I think they raised the viaducts. The street. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. makes more sense that they built a viaduct yeah, yeah. or that they raised the buildings? Think about that. And if you look yeah, at Chicago, yeah. <laughs> it's the same thing. It looks exactly like Atlanta. <laughs> the bridge is coming in and the, mm. all of a sudden the, the ground level goes flat. So mm, and Chicago the is replay, definitely an old world city. That's on maps going way mm-hmm. back. Oh yeah. The the Chicago. regrades are important because that is where the sluicing came in. Um, and the sluicing, if you if I'm sure you know, but for the viewers, if you don't know what sluicing is, sluicing is where they take high pressure hoses and they fire it at the dirt and they make mud, and then they, what's called sluicing the dirt down, and this mud comes down, they collect it into troughs, and then they run these troughs to wherever they want, or they put it on carts, um, uh, train carts, and they haul it away, and they dump it somewhere else, and they create other land. What they do is they regrade the land flat, and they did this in uh, Kansas City, Seattle, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and Chicago, um, and that's um, mm. just to start. They did it other places, but yeah, there's um, that. All of them. Mm, there's, there's that picture that's you know probably one scene of that church, and it's kind of sitting up, and all the ground around it is just being taken away, and it's like way up high, sort of on this bit of dirt. But and they also yeah. say that that was um, church of Mary mining, Mason. don't they? Like the water mine. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Um, you heard that story, like the water mining, where they used to use, and they said they had to ban them because everyone was washing all the cliffs away and stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. It. it uh, yeah. Yeah. There's a there's a name for that. I forget what the name is. I actually have a folder for that. Um, I was doing some research on that recently. Yeah. I, can't remember. I get I get in these little rabbit uh, holes and I keep going. That actually oh, sounds. I've familiar. got so many files that I haven't. Even heard. Hydro, hydro something probably. yeah i think you're on something there Hi- i've got a folder with it somewhere um, on my computer but um yeah that's uh that's mm. about the the gist of it i mean there's a lot more that can be done in that um but that's kind of the 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 gist of what i can tell you right now um really what it boils down to is i need you know or i don't need but we need people that are boots on the ground, on the ground. Like urban mm. explorers to get out there and go down and see what is there. But it's, it's locked down. I don't think we we've seen mm. it because I think it's locked down. I don't think you can get in there without mm. basically sneaking in. So. Mm. Oh, that's all right. We can do that. It's our, it's our realm. Um, I remember <laughs> I was watching this video from those, <laughs> The, the um, explorers, I think they were cave, you know, underground sort of cave, more cave explorers, but they were down underneath, it was underneath London, and they were in a river, like a yeah. river, like, and they, yeah. they, were, they were two, three stories down under the ground in a river, and then I've they stopped, yeah. and they got out in the little bank, and, the steps yeah. and they go up, and they pop out this door in the middle of London, it's like, yeah. what the hell? Oh, I, I, so we just, I mean, big so. Urbex uh, fan. I watch a lot of Urbex channels because those guys are, they are yeah. literally our, we've got the guys we call the boot or guys and gals, but we've got the, the people that we call boots on the ground, but our real boots on the ground are the Urbexers because they're getting the video yeah. underneath. And so that, I, you know, you were saying that you're you're mm. kind of not doing a whole lot of mud flood research, and and I'm kind of trying to look at okay, if you're analyzing, um, let's say uh, a murder, okay, and you're uh, the the you're doing the autopsy, right, and a, the guy comes in and he gets stabbed, okay, are you and if he gets stabbed in the chest, right, are you going to look at his feet to determine how he died? 
Are you going to look at his ears? No, you're going to look at the stab wound. You're going to look at the point of entry. And the point of entry is where the ground meets the building. Okay, so that's kind of where I've focused. Yeah. What is at the knife wound? And what I find is viaducts and pavement light. So. <laughs> yeah, pavement lighting, which is, is next that we're going to get on to. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We just jump straight into pavement lighting, which is something else you came across. I think you first found it in some of those old magazines, didn't you? Um, but but this no. is obviously, you know, how did they light? Light it down there. No. Um, the way I found it was I was watching uh, a documentary on uh, the Seattle Underground, and in the documentary, um, it was like showing the tour of uh, the uh, underground there, and they showed the pavement light under there, and they mentioned them. They said that you know this is pavement light and it lit the underground, and I thought, oh, that's kind of interesting. Um, and I wrote it down, wrote a note down, pavement light, and. So I went back to look up pavement light and um, because I thought, well, that is really fast. I've never heard of that. And when I went to look it up, I found a Wikipedia page and some pictures, but nothing else. Nobody had done any video on it. Nobody had done anything. It Nobody had ever talked about it. It was, there was literally... No data, no no mud flutters talking about. No nobody was talking about, it. and I thought, well, okay, so I guess I can make a video that will like at least explain what they are and show kind of what they are. So what I did was I took uh, the Wikipedia audio, um, uh, somebody reading that, and I put it to pictures of the pavement lights, and uh, that was the first video I did on it just to give people an idea. Now I've done many, yeah. several, I don't even know how many videos on pavement like now, but, um, and I've got a lot more data to put out on yeah, pavement. Light. It's just, um, I've got hundreds of mm. videos. Well, I mean, um, yeah. And so it, it's, you it's, were definitely the first time I heard about it. Well, well, I didn't know I was the first. I just was, I just thought I was too dumb to find it. Like I just couldn't find anybody else that done it. I I didn't. I thought maybe I was like searching it wrong, or or you know maybe everybody called all the mud flutters call it something different. But then I found out that through time that nobody knew what the hell I was talking about. And so I hmm. have I've gone really deep into that. Um, but I can show you. Uh, um, I put together some yeah, uh, images. Um to give you an idea of uh, what I'm talking about. Um, I've got many, many hours of video on this and I'm still working on more video. Um, what this is, is uh, of course, uh, go to the Wikipedia page. Uh, this is the, the say it again. Sorry. <laughs> go, no, go ahead, go ahead. I said link to Stuff Beagle channel in the description. Make sure you go across, subscribe, like share and all that good stuff thank you um what this is is a is a uh, diagram of what um the structure looks like um the structure is it starts with the building okay and you have the mud flood level down here which actually in this picture they actually put in another level so in this picture, there's actually a sub-basement. This is pavement light as well. But for the most part, it's one level down. And this would be the original street level here, uh, or what we call the mud flood level. Uh, or this, Excuse me, this is mud flood level, and this would be street original street level. And what they do is they come in and they dig this area out. And my thinking through my research is that the reason that they did this, um, they say that it's to light the basements, but I don't think that's the reason they did this. I think the reason they did this is so they could get down here and get the old windows and doors and bring them up. And what they did was they dug this area right. out. This area is called an area way. That is the technical construction term for this. Then they would build a retaining wall here. 
then they would build over top of this what they called a vault. And then on top of the vault and inside the vault, they would put in the pavement light, which is right here. These little suckers right here are what are called coal hole covers. And the idea with them is that they could open these up and dump the coal in. They could pull the cart up and dump right from the city street the coal down into the hole. And then the servants could come and get the coal. This is a oh, Charlie okay. Chaplin movie um, that he did called The Bank. And he is standing in front of a building that has pavement light all the way down. And uh, here's another uh, part of my research. This symbol right here, I call the flat earth asterisk. It actually has a uh, architectural term, which I'm still working on. Um, I'm not going, I'm not coming out with it yet because I want to get a little bit more data with it. But I actually have just recently found the actual architectural term of that symbol. But to me, this is the symbol of flat earth right here. That's a whole nother story. Uh, this is a colorized version. Um, this is a picture of what it looked like back when they filmed the film. And this is it today. Same building. You can see the little asterisks here. Here's a diagram of what it would look like. Your street is right here. Your sidewalk is here. This is the vault. This is the building. This is the retaining wall here. Here's modern day uh, what it would look like. These little pieces right here are filled in with concrete, but originally what they were were ventilation and they were open and they would allow air into them. And the official story um, uh, of the, I believe the Baltimore fire is that a uh, cigarette butt was dropped on the ground. It fell through one of these and that is what set the great Baltimore fire. These are modern day pavement wow. lights that have been busted up as through time, the elements and people uh, banging on them and things dropping on them, they break. This is glass in concrete. Yeah. This is pavement light being installed. And the way they would do these is they would have a, a they're sitting over the vault and they would put in a metal frame and then they would lay out in the, on the metal frame, these, the glass prisms uh, well these ones were just rounds um they weren't actually prisms and then they would fill this in with concrete which you could see over here and then they would uh wipe off the the concrete and make it level here's another installation of pavement lights um these are round ones there are very few uh pictures of pavement lights these are done ones right here <coughs> This is what it looks like um, underneath. This is this is the eye beams that they sit on, that the frames sit on, and you can see these people over here watching them. Here's a modern, uh, more of a kind of like a uh, maybe a '40s or '50, maybe '50s, and they got pavement light over here. This is underneath pavement light, and the idea is that originally they were clear. And the light was extremely bright and they were very effective. These are what are called prism lights. And what they would do is they would put these in the transoms. And this area above the doors and windows is called a transom. And in the transom, they would put what were called prism lights. And these prism lights actually had little prisms on the back of them. And the light would come in at an angle and then the light would shoot back into the store. So they had the same effect as the pavement light. Now these have these openings right here um, that were part of the wind catcher system. Now that's a whole nother story. These are uh, prism lights and you notice that they're purple. These are actually called teardrop prism glass. And it was a, they had many designs. Um, a lot of them were designed by, supposedly designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. And they turn purple when they oh. solarize. And the reason they solarize is that originally um, to make the glass clear, they put manganese dioxide in the glass. And over time, the sun solarized the glass and turned them purple. This is underneath pavement glass that is oh. solarized. And you see the prisms right here. 
And the prisms, what would happen is they'd be flat on the top. The, the sun would hit it. The prism would then shoot the light under the building. Here's the gentleman standing underneath the pavement glass. These are um, the original pavement light. Um, what what these are called, these were designed by uh, a gentleman named Thaddeus Hyatt around 1854. And what these were, these were called the bullseyes. And they were round pavement glass in a metal frame, wrought iron frame. And originally he didn't have what were called the nubs, which were these. And they were very slick. And then his second generation actually came out and they had the nubs on them to make them um, a lot safer, and you can see 1883 written on that, um, and there's a patent number there. 1883. Right, so but the again, original, like these originally came out. Bring the viaducts okay. in, if they were putting the viaducts in in the 1920s, what, what would they need prism lighting for in the 1880s? Well, the, the, they started, um, between 1850 and they, they were put in between 1850 and uh, 1930. Um, and, well, they're still being used today, but mainly they were using that time frame. Um, and the history on them is kind of sketchy. So I'm not really sure exactly mm -hmm. when all this happened. Uh, even though we have histories, we don't mm -hmm. know what the history, we don't know if the histories are true. Um, they also had yeah, yeah, well, uh, that as well. Um, you could get them customized no, and you could get different um, types of glass in them. And these ones were the uh, ventilators, the ones here. Um, and then you had oh, these yeah. and then th these would shine light directly down, but then these would shine. They had prisms on, they would shine light at an angle. This is underneath an area way. And you see the old world building and over here, is the retaining wall and you've got the prism glass they also used them in stairs oh, wow that's cool and you can see those in the tribeca neighborhood of new york city here's a diagram you got the building you got the areaway floor this is all called the areaway you got the sidewalk the road is right here and this is the retaining wall this is a diagram of what you could do with it. Uh, this was an advertisement in a catalog, and you have the first floor, modern day first floor, uh, what we call ground level. Ground level here, you got a coal hole cover here. These are pavement light, and then you can have your business underneath in the basement. Here's another diagram. The light comes in, semi prismatic light comes in, and it angles it down. They also had these, and these would go in below the shop windows. So when you see those shop windows that have the uh, displays in them, the cases, yeah. what they would have is they'd have, uh, yeah. it, you'll notice they'll have windows underneath sometimes, and they would put prisms in them, and it would shine light in too. Uh, this is wow. kind of a little picture of a, a blind man, and a. Uh, I have a, a T-shirt that says even a blind man can find find the mud flood. Um, and here's a <laughs> diagram that was done. Um, and you've got, this is the the ones that are underneath the uh, shop uh, displays. And then these are the prism lights on the side, in the sidewalks. And this is called the vault right here, this area. Uh, here is a Hayward catalog and in this catalog, it's a very interesting picture because you can see coal hole covers here that actually have pavement light in them. And then these are pavement light panels here and here and here. They also sold wrought iron stairs. So that's an interesting catalog. I have wow. that catalog. Here's a diagram. Um, you got the coal hole covers here, the prism lights here, you can see the <laughs> stairs here. They also had them where you could have them in the side of the stairs. And this right here is a sub-basement uh, pavement light. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, boy. Hey. Gentleman underneath the pavement light. This is a I mean, lady we've that's... Got those on those. Yeah. We've definitely got those in Australia. 100%. They've become more and more rare um, as we go. They're, they're, they're removing them more and more. Um, 
but you can see they had different ads to explain to people how they could use them. Now the same company sold the mm. prism lights that went into the uh, the prism glass that went into the transoms and the pavement glass. So they were sold and manufactured by the same companies. And here's one of those weird photos where wow. you have the uh, the dudes looking like posed, which you see all the time. <laughs> yeah, the controllers. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. You shouldn't call it that. That's just these are up close. Oh, and, uh, it's just bizarre. Isn't it? Oh, oh they're the cool. prisms. This is a diagram that ex kind of show you how a, a viaduct here and you got your subway here and your you would have your area way here on the left and the right. These are examples of all kinds of things right here. You have one of the large prism glasses. These are very rare because they uh, were they broke very easily. And you also notice it has a flat earth asterisk, as I call them right here in the center. This was designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. These are prism glasses and they go in the transom. You have different form of pavement glass here. You got the prisms, the rounds, you've got the double prisms, you've got the multi prisms. These are squares, these are rounds. These are what are called deck prisms. These are where they supposedly got the idea from because they came in on the uh, tall ships and they got the idea. These will go in the decks of the ships and they would let light in below deck. Oh, that was a coal hole cover wow. right there. There's a uh, underneath the the side in the area. This area right here is called that. This is under what's called the area way, and this right here is called the vault. And this is in Seattle. And this is what this uh, type of image is what got me looking into this. This is a ad. You got the coal hole cover here. The prism uh, pavement glass here. You got. Uh, prism lights in the side here here's a barber shop that has prism lights above this is underground uh -huh. this is underground uh -huh. as well this is installation one of the few pictures i have you see an underground entrance right here This is a overall picture kind of showing you a bunch of different things at one time. They had also had trap doors that had pavement glass in them. You can see that there. This is the strut. I've got a better picture of that. I'll show you. This is a viaduct with pavement glass right there. This is a, a neat ad. Um, if you, you see that the, uh, the modern day street level here in the pavement glass, and then you have the basement down here. This is what would be considered under here. This is pavement glass, and so there's a sub basement. It says to illuminate sub cellar. So you have Ooh, the pavement light into the street that? level here, and this is the area way, and this is the vault. Okay, and this the top here is called the vault. You've got another level. You have a sub basement. <laughs> I've actually found sub sub basements before. And here's another example oh, wow. of ground level and then sub-basement here. And you see it goes double down. God, we just don't know how far down it goes, do we? I mean, but what, what, I mean, it's like, when have you ever known these people who like to make the rules? When have you ever known them to give away real estate? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's why that's why, that's why I think it's a cover. Me, like, yeah, it's a definite this cover. Is, up this something they're doing was, something out of down there. Definitely, no doubt. This this image was taken in the Seattle Underground tour. It's an image they have on the wall to explain how they covered over Seattle. And the official story is that when they were covering over the streets of Seattle, that they raised the street level and they had the area way open and they put in these ladders and people were falling and hurting themselves. Um, but this is actually an official narrative picture in the Seattle underground. 
This is a, a little store area uh -huh. underneath. This is a diagram of how the concreted versions go. These are later versions. Um, the uh, prismatic glass was, uh, the patent came out in 1871. And what it has, you have the metal frame here, and then it's got rebar here. And then you place in the glass into this metal frame, and then you fill the concrete in. And then you level off the concrete and wipe off the glass and let it dry. And that's how you install it. Now, that's all the pictures I have of that. Let me uh, show you uh, one little bit of extraness. Um, this is a website that I highly suggest. It's called glassarian.org. This website has been one of the major resources for my uh, research into pavement glass. This guy, um, he studies glass in all forms, but he has a wealth of knowledge on this website. He tells all about pavement glass. This right here is the original um, patent for pavement light right here. This is the original patent diagram for pavement light, for the vault lighting. These were very large, and they quit selling them quickly because they were very dangerous. They were so big. Uh, the person that created the actual pavement light that we know today is this guy right here, Thaddeus Hyatt, but I'm not even sure that he is actually who did it. Um, but there is a wealth of information. Now, what's that number Was he supposed to invent other stuff as well? That sounds familiar, that name. Yeah, um, he's somebody Maybe you should look at. He's a whole nother rabbit hole. Oh, okay. Uh, oh. Very interesting fella. Now, on this site, some of the um, in most interesting research that he has um, is right here under Patent Index. You click that, and right here you have, it shows... The um, when the patents were uh released or, or when the patents were filed, it shows how many were filed in each year, and then he has a list of every patent with a link to the patent for all the pavement light. Wow, so it was clearly it was and big business, it was huge money, big business. Big, big business. Okay. Now, he also has wow. on here, if I can find it, um, he's got a, uh, let me see if I can find it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it. On this website, on this left side somewhere, he <coughs> has... Um, a, a link he has a page that is nothing but um it, it's on this website okay it, it I, I'll, I'll promise you it's on that website he has a page with nothing but old catalogs and you want to talk about yeah, some fascinating wow. reading you you'll get lost so that is an excellent yeah. resource i highly suggest going to that website and he talks about other things too, nice. um, not just pavement light. Glassy on, yeah. So that's about the yeah. That's I mean, well, the, that's the gist. I have questions. I have many. <laughs> I mean, the whole glass thing too, like the time frame, has got to be questioned too, right? Because I mean, glass was you know glass factories and manufacturing sort of hit you know scale, which wasn't even that big in what eighteen fifty around eighteen fifty. And so, what? Twenty years later, they're suddenly mass producing glass all over the place. It's, it's not very long, is it? And it was a very secret art too. Glass making was very uh, secret. Mm. So you know, mm, it was. Um, I think what they did was it. Now you have. I have hundreds of pictures of pavement lights in situ. But if you go there to most of them today, they're gone. So I have I have been recording these pavement lights in our historical record for years now. 
um, but you can still find them today um, in your cities. Um, they're they're still yeah. there here and there, but they're 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 going away because they here's the problem. They you in order to match them to make them look original you have to use the old ones you have to use the solarized ones and they're very rare because when they tore them out they threw them in the dumps and so in order to to fix them you have to basically repair them with modern day glass and they don't look as good yeah um so you're they're going away and not to mention they're dangerous they they they're famous for falling through and breaking and what happens is the what the the glass um the the concrete will get cracked or the glass will get cracked and then the water will seep down and then it'll get to the metal the steel and it'll start rusting yeah, the steel and then the steel will collapse and the next thing you know they fall in and so what they do is they come in they put in new i beams and they sidewalk over it and they're gone and that's happened that's to most of them concrete it yeah so Wow, yeah. I mean, I've definitely seen them. We've got, I've walked on the ones with in metal, um, the metal ones with little square bits. I always, but they've gone white. They're not, you know, see through or transparent anymore. You just always wonder what they were. And of course, all those coal shoots in Australia, they've changed them all and put the um, telephone company's name on them. And so they're this, they're called Telstra pits now. Well, the coal it's hole covers, like I've got a whole uh, collection of coal hole co I've got hundreds of pics of those. I think people stole them because they were so cool looking. They are neat. Mm. So, and you can see those cool. in my pavement light videos, um, but they are very neat. Um, it would take me an hour to go through those, the, the, the pictures I have of those, but they're, mm. they're very cool. I have thousands of pictures of pavement lights in all form shapes i, I mean hundreds of hours of video everything oh. used to be artistic you know and, and definitely glass making it was an art now yeah. now i mean we don't even have them do we you, you might there's sort of glass blowers who are kind of artists but the only other ones are just it's called glaziers now and they just pick up bits of glass and put them in a window frame it's like Mm -hmm. all the all the, the art's gone hasn't it all the skill there's just nothing left i mean that's kind of the world they've done right they've ripped out the the heart pretty much it's not very nice yeah, yeah we're, um, nothing's the same I, no it's and uh, it's just bizarre they've literally covered the old, old world and and i'm sure most people watching have probably seen these you know these greats in their city which means what's underneath them you know, in, in Australia, if you, we get, um, light, you know, if, if you see these, that then there is underground. That is proof of underground. 100%, That's what they're there for. Isn't it? 100%. We have all these old pubs and they sort of, <laughs> mm, and they have like the doors in the side. And, and so, you know, there's lower levels and they're like, oh, oh no, that's just the basement where they used to pass the beer through. And it's like. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Whatever That's the right. cover store. I, I, just, I think that the uh, speakeasy. Level, just be there. I, I think the prohibition. Speakeasy. Uh, yeah. I think, yeah, yeah. Were, I think yeah. that the whole thing about prohibition mm -hmm. was a cover up for the mother mud flood, so they could have an excuse as to what was down there. Oh, we have speakeasies down there. Oh, we have tunnels down there. That's because of the speakeasies. I think it was all a cover up. I think the prohibition in America yeah. was cover up for the mud flood. That's an opinion. Mm. Yep. I wonder if that's where underground crime comes from, right? <laughs> <laughs> All those undercover police people go down there. <laughs> you know, it's just and these places are still oh, there. They're mad. I mean, all over the place. They're, the the speakeasies are everywhere. The tunnels are everywhere. I'm I'm finding these tunnels. Another uh, phenomena that's starting to happen is that we're finding these uh, bricked up tunnels underneath um, city streets. Um, they they found them in uh, uh, Tampa and Charleston and I believe San Francisco and other cities. And what they are is these arched tunnels um, that are, they thought, they, they think they're old 
sewers, but the problem is there is no record of yeah. anybody building yeah. these things. It's and what they are the is they're roofs, old, like the brick roofs, yeah. yeah, they're they're you could stand up in them and walk, but they're they're old world structures yeah. underneath the ground, and they're starting to be dug up because uh, you know people are yeah. building and and they just find them and they they start tracing them and they go for miles and miles yeah. and miles. <laughs> So that's another phenomenon. The guy in England not long ago who was, I think, renovating his house, and yeah, went through the roof of one, and um, and basically just like left it there and cranked it up, and he had this massive, you know, underground room like under his house. It was ridiculous. Uh, I mean, so you know, all these old old, old houses, right? <laughs> they might be twice as big as people think. You know, you're getting ripped off when you sell them, guys. Yeah. Um, Oh, here I mean, you go. I the think Campbell that... is a bar and cocktail lounge. Oh, Campbell. Don't go there, though, guys. They got pee. They got pee in there, in their bar. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, so I, I hope that gave you a, a general explanation. I know that it's was... complicated stuff, but it's. Okay, no, that was I good. Could... I mean, like I said, I'll, um... <laughs> no, no, you are because you need to go through it because this is a thing. It's, and, and like I said, guys, um, link to Stuff Beagle channel is below. Make sure you check it out because, you know, you've got an awesome channel with heaps of really good research, you know, well-researched as well. Um, but also you've got these topics that they don't seem to have sort of gone out to the, into the community too wide. So I think we need to do that because... I mean, especially the viaducts, right? That's massive, right? If people start hunting around and they yep. use the prism um, lighting and things to help, help, you know, it's a massive thing that can really help the whole boots on the ground. Of course, that's what we, that's what we my want, main guys. Problem you want to get out there with been, cameras and... Um, with my channel, my main problem has been that uh, when I started this, I didn't plan on it doing what it did. I never That was never the intention. And over time, it has changed. And so I did not want to monetize from the beginning. And now I have started to realize that monetization is the only way to get people, uh, to get the algorithm to promote you. Well, so that's my problem yeah, is not being monetized. Yeah. Yep. It, yeah, it, it's a big part. I mean, and if you think about it, YouTube make money that's their only revenue is advertising. So well, why would they so promote they, a channel where they're not going to make any money to a channel where they will make money? When I put the Viaducts video out in the first week, it got 7,500 views. Okay. It's nice. been out over a year now and it's only sitting at like 8,600 views because what happened is you can look at the chart and it goes straight up and then they clamped it and all of a sudden it goes boom. Yeah. It flatlined yeah. and it's yeah. been flatlined ever since because <laughs> they clamped it. <laughs> mm, yeah, they so. do. Yeah, you, yeah. You should see my back office, man. It's just like, wee, boo, wee, boo, boo. it's just like ridiculous. You can just yep. see that they're messing with it. So, um, so yeah, go back and monetize them all, you know. And, and this is the thing, you know, you do a lot of work as well. So this whole well, I'm starting, an, I've know, started a new that, channel. You know, people who are... I've started a so, new yeah. channel, yeah. Uh, Stuffed Beagle Light, and what I'm doing is it's a I'm starting a Ooh. new channel that is no copyright, and when I get um. Uh, oh, when yeah, I get that yeah, channel yeah. up to a thousand view, uh, subs and 4,000 hours, then I'll look into monetizing that channel, but I'm going to keep my original channel, uh, the same because I don't, I still want to be able yeah. to do the things I've done, um, with that channel. I just, I've mm. got, in order to get what my research out, I've got to go that monetization route in just for that. Yeah, it's do, it's yeah, not no, about no, money, it's about the damn algorithm. <laughs> So, mm. live and learn. Yeah, but I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with making money either. You know, it's like, it's not like we're you know putting out a video once a month. You know, there's a lot of time and effort goes into having channels that are productive. You know, it's it's a job. Um, and unfortunately, no <laughs> even though people don't seem to understand it, 
it's it, it, and it's exactly it's not we're not talking an eight hour job it's like oh my god it just never stops um but but we, we still need to eat right we still still need to have a house to live in so you know if we need to be paid it's just that simple the, the, the technology it, costs money you know the, the internet costs yeah. money it, it all costs money it it you know, people, the people around me are asleep and they think that, that I don't do anything. Like they don't think, they don't see, they don't see anything. They don't yeah, care what I'm doing on here. Yeah. And so they kind of look at me like, you know, he don't do nothing. <laughs> they don't have any idea yeah. that I, I, how many yeah. hours I put into this. And there are people like it's, I see Oz Beast in the it's, chest it's, and JJ it's, Organics, uh, Oz Beast and uh, JJ uh, JJ's my new co-host. Oz Beast uh, rode shotgun with me on my live streams. Oh, okay, I've seen JJ. And so they know the hours that um, I put behind JJ? the scenes. They know. <laughs> yeah, JJ's mm, my new. I mean, yeah, well, this is the thing. It's just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I saw, I've seen the last couple that you did. Yeah, I think I said hello on one of them, but and a lot I, of time I, I just I listen, that, I don't uh, say hello. <laughs> yeah. I sent you that message earlier and told you about uh, Art of Dino, um, and I think he would be an excellent person for you to yeah, have on yeah. your uh, channel. I think you'd really get along with him. And he, oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah, mentioned yeah. you to him, and he he seemed interested in talking to you too. So reach out to him, to him. if you need his information. Cool. Let me know. I'll, I'll Definitely, yeah, yeah. No, you sent me, yeah, no, you did. You sent me his email, so I'll get onto him. I was actually think last year sometime I was going to get onto him, but I mean, you know, this this job's like, you go, yeah, that's a great idea. And three months later, it's like, whatever happened well, to that good idea I had? You know, it's like, it's we just, just had a, uh, a through, Wednesday so. night, we had a live stream with him, and um, it was just a, a pleasure having him on the live stream. Uh, he was a wonderful guest. So you will. I, I suggest, and you do what you want, but I suggest him for your Spiral Up channel because um, his yeah, art yeah, yeah. is very yeah. spiritually uh, yeah. done, and I think that it would be a good Indeed, fit for yeah, that yeah. channel. Just a, a suggestion. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, well, maybe I'll have to get him and Kelly on together, then I'll just sit back and let them talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's a man. Yeah. <laughs> But um, that would be yeah. Good. So guys, make sure you do go a and um sub to um stuff beagle and what is stuff beagle light? Is that right? Um, I think yeah, stuff I beagle saw... and stuff beagle light. L I T E. If he shake up, I think if he shake dropped the the link somewhere. But if not, uh, the link to his main channel is in mine. Go to that, and no doubt your other channels link to it. Get him up to a thousand um, subs so we can get this out there and share this work around and, ha and have a look at it all. And another thing is, you'll find one of the only um, interviews with John Levi on his channel, which again hasn't had that many views, really, has it? For what it is, well, I'll, I'll tell you. So, I'll tell um, you the truth is that when when I did that video with John, um, he told me what he was going to do was he was going to put it on his Patreon so that his Patreons, it would be an exclusive for his Patreons, and the idea being that his Patreons would be interested and they would come and support me and my work, mm -hmm. and he never did it. He never promoted the video. He never mentioned the video. And so the video, I have one of the best in interviews with John Levy, and nobody knows it. That's sad. There you go. People so, will, guys, go over and get that video out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, there's only I know Martin got Very him, and it took Martin about four months of pacing, I think, to get it. And I think that's the only other one I've seen of John. No, so no very there's rare. There, um, I think there's one to two more. There's I don't think there's more than four, but I think there's at least one more. But it's rare. I mean, it's like this. a unicorn. Um, I was very privileged uh, exactly to right. speak to him. It was a wonderful uh, conversation, but it, it, if you don't, prom if I'm nobody and, and, and you're somebody and you don't promote it, nobody sees it. I, I think it's but like yeah, up no, like 2,800 views. He's got 226,000 oh. subscribers and only 2,800 views on that video. 
Come well, that on. Is, that's, a, that's a crime, guys. Get out there and share that video around. I mean, so, yeah, I mean, like I said, there's so much good content on the on your main channel and um, no doubt on the second channel. But get across there and I'm supporting him to get up to a 1,000 so he can start getting this, you know, get monetized, get all the info out there and, and, and jump on the, the Google, or oh, sorry, the YouTube algorithm. So there we go. And, uh, right, we're going, going uh, for Campbell, uh, Campbell one, you're uh, more than welcome to come on my weekly live stream if anytime you want. Um, I do it every Wednesday from uh, 9 yeah, to man. 2 a.m. Every Eastern. Wednesday? Yep. Sure do. Uh, and and also, time. yeah, I do it from, uh, well, actually, I, my weekly show is uh, Wednesdays, my, 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. But I'm actually starting to do pop-up live streams which are just kind of whenever the hell I feel like Ooh. it. So if you want to do something sometime, nice. I'm, I'm free to do other times too. Just I'm, I'm doing more. Yeah, man. Now. Sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Of course. Just, yeah. Let me know. Um, Wednesday is actually one of the days that I don't have anything booked. <laughs> so I think it's the oh, okay. only day actually. So yeah. Yeah. Hit me up, man. Hit me up and, I like the little and, thing yeah, you hooked me up, the text thing. Uh, so that works really cool. Uh, we've been getting back and forth on that, so that that works out really good. So, but uh, communicate that, yeah, with you. yeah, I know it's you've got to find. Them. That's really yeah. Cool. I actually answer that one. That's that's one of the ones that I answer. So don't give my name out because if I get too many, they get rid of it. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you get that. Right, there's so. very, there's only a handful of us out there uh, that are colleagues of this 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 uh, mm. research. So I mean, we kind of have to mm. support each other because we're together. all we got. Yeah, exactly. So yep, indeed we do. We need to build more of a more of a yeah community for sure. That's what we're all doing at the moment. So it's good yeah. good that we're now we're now in contact, and I've got Art Dino, and, and I'm gonna. I've got going to add Paul as well, Paul Cook. So, oh, Paul. yeah, I'm talking to all Paul the people. Hey? Uh, we're, we're working on a little something. So, a little something, something awesome. Also. All right. So, there's lots coming up, guys. So, there you go. Thank you, everyone, for being with us. What have we got here? 300 of you still watching. Thanks for spending some time with us. Um, I hope you enjoyed that one. I mean, I did. I know it's for most of you, it's probably new information. So, um, jump across now and keep going. Um, give give um, some views to the channel um, and share it around. Let's you know help beat the the algorithm that way as well, right? And they can't stop you sharing. So share as much as you can. Let's get this information out there because this topic is starting to take off. Um, I've noticed recently it's starting to to gain a lot of momentum. So um, let's get out we there and change the world view. Hey, we need more eyes, more, more people, more, research more boots people. on the ground. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And if you don't want to make videos, yeah. just get the footage and send it to someone who makes videos. You know. Yeah. Or just Absolutely. put it up without your without your face. You know, whatever you need to do. It's it's yeah. But we need the information because <laughs> yes. we're all in different yes. cities and we're all surrounded by it. That, that, the that's data. why this the topic is so good because it's so accessible. Mm. The le the leads. Yeah. Check this city out. Where's this? Here's a buy. Da da da. I, I have a list of, of leads, so I keep, when people say my city, I think has this, I write it down. So nice. I, I keep track of this stuff. Awesome. Yeah, well, you need to. I mean, I've just got so many notes, but my problem is getting back to them. <laughs> God, <it's laughs> too much. I need, I need two PAs now. Don't I have one. Um, mean, well, I've got a all really right, good yes. Thank you, everyone, for yeah, 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 I know you're starting to build a good team. I know I need a, a, a bigger team. Anyone want to be on my team? <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm, I'm notoriously hard to contact as well. I've so. been very lucky to find good people to help um, out with what I'm doing. So I appreciate everybody's mm. help. Oh, it just, it and, helps you know, so much, are, doesn't it? It, it just, Matter of fact, yeah, right now, there's, there's one so person much. right here. There's one person right here I'm seeing right now that uh, I, I I don't know if it gets enough credit, and that's Hippie Shake. Um, she puts up with Hippie Shake, yeah, a lot of shit, and she deserves a lot of credit um, because she's a, a, a she, she goes in and she helps cha she's the all these different channels, and and she doesn't get involved. Mm -hmm. She just helps, 
and she takes a yeah. lot of flack for that. So, yeah. you know, God bless you, uh, hippie, because uh, you deserve exactly. it. <laughs> Big shout out to hippie. Yeah, you know, like like before, you know, you mentioned a, a video and Hippie Shake has got the link up there, you know, so this is, yeah, definitely. Thank you. She does, and she does it for everybody. Awesome everybody. job. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, she, she's, I know she mods quite a lot. <laughs> and this is the thing, you, you know, if you don't want to make videos, there are ways to help out, you know, you can get involved, um, you know, in whichever mm -hmm. way, you know, you feel that you, that you can, basically. And um, Some people we'll, do we'll artistic things. Some get. people do yeah. audio. Some people send videos. Some people yeah, send well, leads. Sarah. Yep. It's Sarah S. Ra has been doing um, artwork for me and for Bernie and other people. So, you know, everyone's getting out there doing their bit. It's, they're starting to get a bit of cohesion in our in our little strange corner of the interwebs. It's it's wonderful. It's it's. <laughs> I never I never expected it would do this. This is. Um, this was never my plan. I had I never planned this to be this. Oh. I so. didn't. When I started, I didn't. I just did not even understand YouTube. Um, and I just no. played a video. <laughs> like, I didn't plan any. I didn't go. I don't know how I got here, right? But um, but now I mean, and it was so you know because I haven't been able to you know get a job and work properly in that because I'm not very handy at the moment. But. This has pretty much got me through, yeah. right? And, and it wasn't planned, but when I needed, you know, a bit of money coming in, it was not that I'm making much, but it's enough to get by. So, and it's fun. I mean, who'd want a job? Once you do this, a job, right? Boring. Don't do jobs. I, I enjoy. I do handyman Lots work, but uh, for my for my family. bread and butter. That's. But this is what I really enjoy doing. Not a, yeah, yeah, not a nine to five, forty hour. Yeah. No. Nah. Yeah. Way to go. So everyone jump over and help um, build up his new channel. And um, because I mean, my opinion is anyone doing this work, and that's what it is, it's work. Anyone who's putting the amount of time and effort and research and everything into these channels deserves to be paid. They just do. And if you don't think that, then, you know, go and watch another channel, basically, because, you know, we need to live, right? This whole truth is should be, you know, living in the to, you know, doing everything for free is a bunch of crap. Um, it is. I'm monetized and I'm, it's because it's a job to me. It, it's a job. And it's, like we said before, it's not a 48 hour a week job, is it? It's like a, your, your lifetime oh. job. It's it. It just never stops, no. you know. It's, um, so, we, you know, we need to be, we need to live. We need to be compensated for our work. And the more we can make, you know, of these channels, um, the more time we get to put into it. You know, that's how we get people from being part-time researchers to being full-time researchers, which is what Paul Cook's just done. He's he's decided he's yeah. not going back to his his job job because he's now so a full-time cool. researcher. That's so cool. It's so awesome, right? And that's what we need more of. So, um, yeah, yeah, get out there, guys. Sub to um to both the Beegs' channels, share them around, and all the other people in this community. You know, support them. And of course, you know, stay out of any, you know, any any of the stuff that's going on out there. There's lots of weirdness, but um, let's just sort of stay together and stay cohesive and, and, and take it that way instead. And and the, the one, one, one <laughs> important thing I'd like to add is that um, we need as a community to have conversations. And just because we disagree with somebody doesn't mean that we don't need to have a conversation. Because when we don't communicate, people get pissed off. And when people get pissed off, people get real. And so we've got to communicate. If you disagree yeah. with somebody, get in a debate with them, have a communication with them, and work it oh, out. Yeah. You don't have to agree. Yeah. But if you don't try to talk it through, it's going to get worse. So trust me on yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. There's a little I've bit going there, on I've in been the there. background as well. Um, exactly, exactly. Communication um, is. And key. Hello, Karen. I haven't seen you for a while. Hello, hello. Um, I've still got your 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 magic gem bee things you sent me hanging up in my bus. I get so many things sent to me. Like these people are so cool. I've got lines here. I've got copper. Bloody necklaces that have been made for me and bands and 
All good night. And you got one too. Yeah. <laughs> Keep the organ. You got organ on there. There you go. Nice. Well, yeah. That's a nice one. Cool. Yeah, I have a. It has a awesome. flower of life on it. I don't. I don't know if you can see the flower of life on there, but it has yeah, it on cool. there. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I can see it well. Yeah, it's good. And I've got the awesome. flower of life tattoo, of course. Oh, okay. I saw the one on the top of your arm, but not that one. What do you got? Just a star on the top. Nice work. What's on the top? On on your wrist. Just all oh, that the flower. It, oh, dude, it, is that like it's infinity movie? symbols over and over again. Oh, I, oh, okay. I got gotcha. you. Nice matching. Ooh, I've got the laws of the universe on my arm nice. here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's laws of the universe. Oh, wow. oh okay. I done it in a yin yang too. Yeah, and I, uh, nice. yeah, I started with yin -yang, you uh, that one? Oh, yeah. It, all my tattoos have spiritual oh, yeah. meaning. I've got, I've got, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> I've got a bunch. So. <laughs> Lots. <laughs> when, when I woke up in 2008, I had no uh, tattoos, but uh, I wanted to uh, permanently uh, oh, really? state some of my beliefs that I've, that I learned. And um, so, you know, I've got an onk on, I've got an onk on one side and a, uh, 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 tree of life on the other. I don't know if you can. Tree of life, about it, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, neck tats and all, man. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. All righty, well, there we go. It's 10 o'clock here, and it's the end of my, my day and my week, and, and, and I'm going to go to go to bed. <laughs> so, thanks for you. joining us. Um, definitely, you know, um, Give me a mail. Oh, well. I'd love to come on your show, and I think um, we'll definitely get you back on, and we'll, we'll um, maybe broach that the topic of you know what the hell happened, right? Something happened around the forties, um, so it'd be you know, that'd be an interesting topic to cover as well. So yeah, I'll definitely be in touch with that one. And um, more thank you, into. everyone in chat. Always more to look into. Always more. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, Hope you had a good time. Please share this around. Give us a like. Give us a subscribe if you haven't already. And stay awesome. And to you all on the next upload. Thank you. Bye for now.